starting off with the materials that are going to be needed for this project. First thing is a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Next, some crafting scissors. You're going to be needing a darning needle or a sewing needle. And finally, a weight for yarn. You can use any color. I'm using purple today, just so you guys can see the stitches a bit more clearly against the white background. Also, don't be alarmed. I've been trying to get off red nail polish for my nails for the past week and a half, and it will not budge. So if my fingernails look like they're bleeding, they're not. It's just really red Christmas nail polish. First, starting off with the purple yarn, I'm just making a slip knot. I'll actually repeat that slower. So I'm just creating a loop like this, and then pulling the loose end through to create a knot then grab your crochet hook and slip it through and pull this short tail end to tighten it onto the hook you can pull on the working yarn part of the tail end to loosen it but i say keep it pretty snug to the hook here now this pattern is working in rows and there's only two rows so it's fairly quick to work up we're first going to start by chaining 51. now to do a chain you're just going to yarn over on your hook and pull through that is our first chain we're going to yarn over, pull through, that's our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on, nine, ten. Make sure while you're doing the 51 chains to maintain your proper tension so that each stitch is the same tension. So we'll go all the way down and I'll meet you towards the end. Once you did 51 chains, this is what it should look like. If you're using a smaller yarn, obviously your stitches are going to be a bit smaller and your chain is going to be shorter. If you want to add more to make your puppy flower a little bit more puffy, you can even double this. I remember in 2021, I used to do 102 chains to make my puppy flower super, super big, but then I started switching it to this. So if you're ambitious, go for the 102 chains. But now we're going to be working on the first row. So if you can see here, we have our first stitch from the hook, second stitch from the hook, and third stitch from the hook. Going into the top part of the third stitch from the hook, we're going to do a single crochet. So place your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. You now have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops on your hook. We're gonna chain two, so yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then we're gonna skip the next stitch. So this is the next stitch here, skip it, and into the next one, place a single crochet which is insert hook, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. I'm going to chain two again, so yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then again, skip that stitch, that next stitch, go into the next one, and insert that single crochet. Then chain two, and that's gonna be the pattern we're repeating for the entire length down the 51 chains. As you can see, it leaves these gaps, and that's perfectly fine because we're going to be working into those gaps in the next row. So I chain two, skipping that next stitch, going into the next one, putting my single crochet, chain two. Skip a stitch, into the next one, a single crochet, and chain two. And let's continue doing this all the way down. So I just did my last chain two and I'm going into that final stitch of the row and placing my final single crochet. And this is what the end of your row should look like. For the next row, we're going to be working in the opposite direction into all of these little gaps. So I'm just putting my hook back onto this row and we're going to chain one. So yarn over and pull through, that's our chain. And now you're going to flip your work. So we're working on this direction now into this first stitch here we're going to insert our hook into that entire gap so this next row is simply just working in each gap we're not working in each individual stitch into the gap so insert your hook yarn over pull through and continue pulling through to create a slip stitch we're going to chain one yarn over pull through and next we're going to be doing half double crochets so we're going to insert three half double crochets still working in that same gap so yarn over insert your hook yarn over, pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three of those loops on your hook. That's our first half double crochet. Let's put our second one. So yarn over, insert into the gap, yarn over, pull through, three loops on our hook. 
yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. That's our second half double crochet. Then yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And that's our third half double crochet. We're now gonna yarn over and chain one. And back into that same gap, we're gonna insert another slip stitch. So put your hook back into that gap, yarn over, pull through, and continue pulling through. And as you can see here, it kind of creates almost like this shell like border. I believe that's what this pattern is called, the seashell border, but it makes these little bumps. And in each gap, we're gonna be creating one of these little seashell bumps, and it's gonna make the petals look very nice and full. If I'm going a bit too fast for you and you need a little bit more practice with these stitches like single crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, I will link my video to my crochet 101 which teaches you how to do all these stitches down below in the description box or wherever on the screen that it will show up. But yeah, that's just the pattern that we're going to continue in each gap. So we're done working in that gap. Let's go into the next one here, insert our hook and create a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through. Next, we're gonna chain one, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and do three half double crochets. So that is one half double crochet, two half double crochets, and three half double crochets into that gap. Chain one and go back into that same space and do another slip stitch to close off that shell. Now working into the next gap, we're going to do a slip stitch, chain one, three half double crochets, chain one, and slip stitch back into that same gap. And that's the pattern we are going to be working into each gap. So slip stitch, chain one, three half double crochets. chain one, and then slip stitch back into that gap. Continue this pattern into all of the little spaces that you have down your rows, and I'll meet you at the end. I just have one more space left, so I'm gonna continue this pattern. Slip stitch, chain one, half double crochet three times, then chain one and slip stitch. Now to finish off this pattern, you're going to want to cut a fairly long tail end. So there's two options that you can do. If you leave a long tail end, you can use the darning needle to sew this flower together to give it its shape, or you can do what I do, because sometimes it's a bit easier to use hot glue. So that's the no sew option in this pattern. But if you choose to do the darning needle and you want to sew your flower together, then definitely leave a long tail end. If you're doing the gluing, you can leave a short tail end. Just taking my hook and pulling through to fasten off here and giving it a little tighten. Before we start this, I want to show you the proper side of your project and the other side of your project. So this is the proper side. You can see the stitches are a lot more defined here. And typically it is when the tail end is on your left hand side this is the proper side of your project for this specific one. If you flip it over, you can see the stitches are puffed out a little bit, like the shells that we made are puffed out, and that is the wrong side, so the part with the puffed out side. We want these ones to show because the stitches are a lot more defined and they just look a lot neater. So if you're doing the hot glue version of this, which I really, really recommend, especially if you're a beginner because, you know, you don't really have to sew anything together. What you're gonna do is attach some hot glue onto here and simply just continue the hot glue down this chain right here, that initial chain 51 that we did. And all you have to do is twist and glue, twist and glue, twist and glue all the way throughout and it will just secure everything together. The reason why I recommend hot glue and not tacky glue is because hot glue will actually melt the fibers that are in acrylic yarn and it will bond them kind of together so it's a lot more secure. 
you can use tacky glue. You're gonna have to use a lot of tacky glue to make it super secure, especially with a thicker weight for yarn like this. So yeah, if you're doing the glue together version, definitely use hot glue. But if you're not a fan of gluing together your crochet projects, then you're just gonna want to get that long tail end and pull it through a darning needle. And it's kind of the same principle almost. We're just going to sew in between each of the holes here. And that's why we kind of create those gaps. Take that darning needle and stick it through and keep folding. So now I'm gonna go in through the back through that little opening as you can see here through that opening and i just keep going back and forth through those openings as i fold and go over in and out in and out it's a very basic sewing pattern kind of does this even count as sewing who knows but <laughs> we're just going in and out through those um gap spaces that we made So this is the final stitch that I'm just going through or the final gap space. And I'm just going to now secure this to my project. What I do is I like to just go into a random stitch, any random stitch and just thread that loose tail end through kind of close to where the short tail end is. And I like securing this with a knot, just a simple knot, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then you can either take both of these tail ends and thread them through and cut them off. But the way I attach these onto the stem, I kind of just secure them with hot glue. It's a lot easier because then it melts into the project. That's why I love using hot glue for my crochet projects. Just like this, you have your own puffy flower. If you want to attach this for like a brooch or onto the stick, it's just kind of the same as with every other crochet flower that you would do. You just find an opening somewhere between that last two layers and insert the stick and secure with hot glue you can even attach this onto like pin backings all that stuff because they make super cute hair clips and just regular clothing clips as well honestly i don't even know what i'd call this flower i always get questions what's this flower called on tiktok whenever i post a video of it and i just call it the puffy flower i don't know it's just a pattern i made up on the whim I tried to find a flower in real life that looks similar to this and i just can't so <laughs> whatever we're calling it the puffy flower for now thank you guys so much for watching i hope this tutorial was a lot more in depth and a lot better quality than my first tutorial that i've uploaded about the puffy flower literally around this time last year yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're looking for more updated flower tutorials that I do, I will link my updated lavender tutorial down below in the description as well. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.